Welcome to Kermit Uncut. Interesting news from Summer Isle. As I'm sure you're aware, The Wicker Man, dubbed the Citizen Kane of horror movies, is returning to UK cinemas in a long cut. As you probably know, when The Wicker Man was first made, directed by Robin Hardy, the distributors, British Lion, didn't rate the film as highly as the makers had, and they cut it back. They cut it down very severely in order to make it into a supporting feature. It went out as a second film with the Don't Look Now. And there was a, a lot of fuss about this at the time, and people fought for ages and ages to get the film restored. All the missing footage was deemed to be lost. Then, missing footage turned up in America. Roger Corman had a version of it, but not a 35mm version of it. It was restored for a DVD. In fact, there are numerous versions. I mean, this. This is a restoration of it, which has got a commentary by me, in fact, and Christopher Lee and uh, Edward Woodward and uh, Robin Hardy. This is a, a collector's edition. Look, this one comes in kind of like a Wicker Man style box, and it's got like loads of you know inserts and that kind of thing. Anyway, loads of different versions. Generally thought the director's cut is great because it's got all the backstory and he's there for more nights. The short version by British Lion, people don't like because it's sort of you know gutted the thematic meat out of the movie. So what have they actually found? Well, turns out, after everyone assumed that what they had found was a 35mm print of the very long version, not so. What they actually found was a 35mm version of the interim version, the Abraxas print. This, from the press release, it says, a 35mm print was found at Harvard Film Archives, measured to be around 92 minutes long, so that's not the longest version. This print was scanned in 4K and sent to London, recently inspected by Robin Hardy, the director. He confirmed that it was the cut that he had put together with Abraxas in 1979 for the US release. This has previously been known as the middle version and was in turn assembled from a 35mm print of the original edit he had made in the UK in 1973 but which was never released. Robin accepts that the film materials for this long version will now probably never be found. Sadly, it seems though that has been lost forever. However, I am delighted, says Hardy, that a 1979 Abraxas print has been found as I also put together this cut myself and it crucially restores the story order to that which I had originally intended. So, some elation, long version found, some disappointment, not the longest version, but hey, you know, chance to see the Wicker Man in the long version in the cinema is really good. And then I was having a conversation with a Wicker Man fan who said, you know, I know you're not allowed to say this, but I actually quite like the shorter version, the 35mm version that was released in cinemas. You know, he said he just, you know, it, it, it cuts to the chase. It, it just, it kind of gets on with the action. But he said it in a way that implied that you shouldn't possibly say this out loud. But since that conversation, a few people have said the same thing. And I've had conversations about Blade Runner, people saying, you know, I quite like the original cut, you know, with the voiceover that we're not meant to like. That kind of, because that, that's the version that I saw. In fact, the short version of The Wicker Man was for a long time the only version any of us knew. Well, here's some interesting news. This has just been breaking on the grapevine. You may not have heard this yet. There's a rumour that along with that longer version, the 35mm print of The Wicker Man, they also found the shortest version of The Wicker Man in existence. This apparently was prepared by British Line in the early 1970s. And uh, this was when they were considering not just putting it out as the second feature on a double bill with Don't Look Now, but actually as the third feature on a triple bill, maybe even the fourth feature on a quadruple bill, because the running time is, is pretty tight. It clocks in around about 17 and a half minutes. Now, obviously, that's going to lose an awful lot of stuff. So in the longest version, Edward Woodward's character arrives in some role. He spends a, a few nights there. In the shorter version, you know, the, the version that was released in, in, in cinemas, he, he's there one night. Some people argue that that cut implies two nights, but generally thought of as one night. In this shortest version, essentially what happens is, and there are plot spoilers here, but if you've come this far, you probably know, Edward Woodward's character arrives on Summer Isle and is led straight to the Wicker Man, where they set fire to him while singing summer is a coming in. Yes, you lose a lot of subtext, that is true, but there are some things to be gained. I mean, for example, we do solve the problem of having Brit Eklund very badly dubbed by Annie Ross, and it also solves the long-standing Brit Eklund issue that when she's seen dancing up against a wall, she is clearly body doubled by somebody who, in Brit Eklund's own words, has a completely different shape bottom. Both of those problems are solved. We also lose an awful lot of Christopher Lee talking to apples and insects. So, much to be said on all different sides. Christopher Lee always argued for the longest possible version, British Lion for the shortest possible version. Edward Woodward actually liked the film in all possible cuts. You decide for yourself. How much time do you want him to spend there, and how quickly do you want The Wicker Man to cut to the chase?